What is up? Welcome back to Tomahawk. I am your host, Rob Fox, joined as always by Dan Holloway. Uh, unfortunately, you're going to come to us after this Cardinals Braves uh, series wrap up game is over. However, we are watching it um, on the screen as we talk to you, so we may get distracted from time to time. Although I don't have much to yell at, it'll just be like giggling into the microphone. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's uncharacteristically good start for the Braves, despite their rotation being pretty banged up, right? They have one good starter right now. Yeah, there's three dudes in our rotation right now that aren't, dudes that I expect to be in the rotation who aren't in it right now. Uh, obviously, Freed is on the 15 day DL, but they backdated that to the first. So he'll be back. Oh, that was a good play. They'll be back, uh, or he'll be back on the 16th. Yeah, or he 17th, should be the minimum. One of those two games. Yeah. Um, Kyle Wright's still out. He he he'll be back soon. I think they're just looking for some um, reduction in his shoulder inflammation, and the same thing for uh, Rise on Glazies. Uh, but the bullpen has been great. We we won't. I don't even care about is Glacius. Like, let him get yeah. as healthy as he needs to get. Yeah, we okay. don't. You don't need a closer for the first two months of the season, to be honest. No, and um, our bullpen depth is more than enough. It's been it's been especially good there. So, um, what's that kid's name? Uh, Nick. He's, I say kid. He's not a kid. He's fucking thirty two years old. But Nick Anderson uh, has been a very very good reliever in the past, and he's had some trouble the past couple of years, um, and uh, in Tampa. Uh, uh, f- last he didn't pitch at all last year. Mm-hmm. Just health health trouble, not pitching trouble. Yeah, yeah. But his during his stint in Tampa, his WHIP was like .7 the whole time. That dude's a fucking stud. I don't. I didn't even remember we signed that guy. Which one was the other Tampa one we got? Yates. Uh, no, I think Kirby Yates came from San Diego, didn't he? I don't remember. We got another reliever from Tampa in the last uh, like year or two. Um, We've just I, been kind of like taking the relievers they don't want anymore, but they're not like washed or anything, as far as I can tell. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Yates was the Padres. Man, there was someone. Doesn't matter. Uh, there was someone else we got from the the Rays last year. I thought, um, but regard. Oh, was it McHugh? Uh, yeah, maybe he's been, he's bounced around a lot. I think he's pitched for um, like five or six teams. Uh, who hasn't? Right. I mean, if you're in the bullpen, like. That's typically the uh, situation. Yeah, he, he went from uh, Houston to Tampa Bay, then over to us. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's... And he's just a reliable guy. Yeah. Um, but the real the standout so far has been uh, Nick Anderson in two appearances. He's given up some runs, but he's looked really sharp. Uh, Kirby Yates has looked back to his previous form. Mm-hmm. Um, even... Jimenez got himself in a little trouble and got bailed out for it, but even he looked in the first uh, inning he pitched pretty sharp. And then Menner and Dylan Lee looked like themselves, right. which is always good. I think Chavez pitched a relatively clean inning last night. Um, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's not given up a run yet this year, .6 whip. But it's, only, it's a great, only it's a great three appearances, but Strider looked great. Um, I think you got to you got to think that. Uh, just based on being young, because I think a lot of these other guys who are contenders for Cy Young, Sandy Alcantara is the only person I think, other than Strider, that can win the Cy Young this year in the who National League. Just threw a complete game shutout, I believe, yeah. Uh, yeah. last in night. In the second game of the season, which right. is fucking wild, man. I mean, that guy is such a stud. If he stays healthy, it's hard to bet against him, to be honest. But Strider's yeah. the only guy I would pick, because I'm not going to pick Scherzer. Um, just too old. I'm not going to pick... Uh, 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 Verlander for the same reason, although they could surprise you, but I don't think Verlander will get enough starts probably to, no. to do it. I wanted. I, I mean, and, Freed finished second in Cy Young voting last year, and I love Max Freed, and Max Freed did, was a great pitcher last mm-hmm. year, but that's a week too. It is, yeah. I think Urias probably had the better year too. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough. As a matter of fact, I think Strider may have had the better year, frankly. <laughs> uh, or Kyle Wright, who won 21 games if last you're, year. If you're above the age of 60, Kyle Wright was your Cy Young winner, I think. Last year. It's a 20 game winner, hard to yeah, hard to bet again. But I mean, um, I think Alcantara, really the only like knock against Alcantara, <laughs> and I don't consider it a knock, but I guess a lot of probably younger writers who, who it, Hugh even closer to analytics than I do, would say he doesn't strike a ton of people out. Like, he's not a bad strikeout guy, but he had, like, five strikeouts in his complete yeah. game shutout last the, night. Well, so. The, so the game is not to strike people out. It's to win I, ball games. Well, I agree. I think uh, Kevin Costner said strikeouts are fascist, by the way. Yes. In Bull Durham. But 
We'll see. I, I don't know. I mean, he won it last year. They didn't seem to care last year, right? No, no. I mean, again, it was a week. Uh, oh, who? Uh, there was another dude who actually pitched really well who finished uh, too far down uh, for the Giants. He came over from the White Sox. Oh, Radon. Oh, Radon, yeah. yeah, yeah Carlos Radon. Yeah. But he's gone now, right? He's in the with the Yankees now. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah, he is. Jesus he's Christ. Just yeah. So around. it's it was a, it was a shallow pool. And what I was, gonna, but what my point with that with the strikeouts is, is that. Alcantara, yes, I agree. I, and, you know, you know, we grew up watching Maddox and Glavin, so I don't think we ever thought – I was never super horny for strikeouts, right? I loved watching them get grounders. I care way pitch. more about innings pitched than strikeouts. It, yep, yep, agreed. And, and just, you know, effort exerted during, you know, efficiency, I guess you could say. But – um so I've never been like, oh, strikeouts, even though it is fucking rad to watch Strider just mow motherfuckers mm. down. But I think uh, younger people, younger voters – um, people in their maybe 45 and under who vote for that stuff, uh, the advantage Strider could have if they're relatively neck and neck or even Alcantara's had a, a little bit of a better year is that sure. his not, his strikeout number, I mean, he's going to be put, he would be putting up like obscene numbers. He's he's going to push, uh, if I had to guess, well, we'll see, I, probably 270, give or take, if he stay, stays healthy. I don't know that he's, he's still kind of inefficient right now mm-hmm. um still what was it six innings again in his first start which is the earlier but that that the, his line that was his typical line last year yeah six innings nine to 11 strikeouts a, a couple walks mm-hmm. like i i saw that line and i was like oh he's he's being spencer strider again yeah and he uh you know 96 pitches through six innings that's not that bad um but you'd like to see a little bit more efficiency i i have Especially with the caliber defense that Atlanta plays, you want to see a little bit more contact there if possible. But you know, whatever. I it's don't don't get too hung up on that. Because, yeah, yeah, whatever works. Um, d- just the quality of the bullpen. But he's only gonna on if he throws if he makes all thirty two starts and averages six innings a start, he's gonna get one hundred ninety four uh, or so innings pitched. Um, but you know the fucked up thing about that is it, at his normal strikeout rate that is 290 plus strikeouts. Yeah. So he might if if he there's a there's an outside shot he gets over 300 and all things being equal as you said if he's like a 15 to 18 game winner with a sub four ERA and he's got close to 300 strikeouts hard to say no to that right. Yes, especially you know if if him and Alcantara are, are floating within like a half point of each other in yeah. ERA and Alcantara's. Probably not going to get a ton of luck in the wins department. Wouldn't be surprised if Strider is the other way and does mm. get luck in the win department. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. The only thing I would like to see more out of Strider, I guess, is I don't need him to go seven, but I would like his six to be more efficient. Yeah, he does always see. I mean, that's a, a lot of that is a uh, third time through the order situation, mm-hmm. right? Which is um, that's something that almost every young pitcher deals with. It's why Ian Anderson is in the minor leagues right now, because the first two times through the order, he's typically good. He just doesn't have a third pitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Neither does Strider as of yet. Right. Well, when you throw 100 miles per hour, it's, <laughs> there's a, it's a lot more forgiving. No, that's right. not true. He's, he's, he had three strikeouts, I think, in spring, I read, that were on his uh, circle change. Okay. Which is interesting because it looked good. Yeah. Uh, what doesn't, is doesn't clock? <laughs> I think it was 86, okay, 87, so something like that. A 13-mile-an-hour difference. It, yeah. It was, uh, well, no, because it was it was 11-mile-per-hour difference, so it, it must have been 87 then. Yeah, because um, he float. He hit. He's ninety eight, ninety nine, hundred. Yeah, um, but yeah, it was. It was. It looked good. It, not not a terrible amount of uh, movement on it, but the same uh, tunnel and same arm action. Which when some, when you're having to get ramped up for a hundred, that that's that's enough. You don't right. need the crazy movement on it. You'll be swinging um, before that ball's crossing the plate. Yeah, the the guy that surprised me yesterday. Dylan Dodd, who is just some fucking, as his parents described him, a nobody from nowhere, uh, <laughs> who is just like doesn't seem affected by the fact that he's pitching in front of uh, sixty thousand people. He doesn't care. He's yeah. just like, yeah. And by the way, um, he pitched for college at SEMO, Southeast Missouri. Yep. So he is, you know, probably even more acutely aware than the average person. Probably got, been to quite a few games at Bush. Mm. Uh, coming up from, I think, Cape Girardeau. There were 500 people there in the stadium watching him from his hometown. Yeah. Not his hometown, but people who knew him. There were, that's what his parents said. There were about 500 people there yeah, to watch him play. That doesn't surprise me. That's fucking um, crazy. Uh, get the gap. Uh, yeah, so his performance last night, um, 
five innings, six hits, uh, no walks. He was very, he was a little too accurate, to be honest. Uh, I think that's something. Maybe they bring in Glavin the way that we've brought in Chipper to help uh, Riley and a couple of the younger guys with their hitting approach. Yeah, bring in Glavin to teach him how to fucking pitch just outside the zone and get outs because. His slider and fastball come out of the same arm slot. There, obviously, he struck out fucking uh, 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 two of the best hitters in baseball, the number one and two P- MVPs last year, twice each last yeah. night. With, uh, or I'm sorry, once, twice. One of them was twice. One of them was tw- uh, once with that pitch, and uh, it's it's tough. But you need to, you can't just throw strikes all the time. You right. know what I mean? I let me let me look because I think he I think it was like ninety percent strikes or something like that. I mean, sec. I'll take that as opposed to the uh, other situation, which is you know he can't find the zone. Mm. Um, and he was nibbling. I saw uh, man, he he was putting quite a few sliders on the uh, back foot, uh, low and yeah. away. Seventy two percent strikes. That's that's that that might be too much. What, where do you want him to live? Um, I, I want two to one, so 66, 65, 67%, somewhere in that range. I okay. think 70 is a bit high because what, what you don't want to be as a pitcher is predictable. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if, you, if you're playing MLB The Show, for example, you can go into the sliders and set how frequently the opposing, the CPU pitcher throws strikes and just set it to 100%. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Now you, can, you know every pitch is a strike, you just crush it. Um, there were a couple of opportunities. The second time he faced uh, Arenado, I think, he threw that back foot slider, got a swing and miss. He wasn't even anywhere close to it. Um, and he was perfectly set up for a fastball right up out of the zone. And he kept throwing it right at the top of the zone. Mm-hmm. And Arenado fouled it off twice. And I think eventually hit a single or something like that. I don't remember okay. exactly what happened. But that's just, you know, building blocks. You go back and watch that tape and be like, if I had thrown that ball four inches higher, that would have been a strikeout. And I wouldn't have gotten into that trouble in that last inning. Yeah. You know what I mean? just something to think about he seems like a really stoic kid too god did he see get another hit oh it was a line out acuna is ripping the fucking cover off the ball right now as a matter of fact he's on pace for 260 hits uh we're, sweet. we're five games in but i'll take that um yeah. yeah so that was what i wanted to get your thoughts on the first five uh plus games we're about halfway through the the sixth game mm-hmm. uh with the braves up five nothing as we record uh what have you seen so far we talked about acuna yeah acuna looks Real fucking good so far. Two outfield assists yesterday. Now, mm-hmm. granted, you maybe could give that assist to the Cardinals' third base coach as much as anyone else. The same with the one today that happened for uh, for uh, uh, Rosario. Yeah, yeah, that Rosario threw That was terrible. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Un- unbelievable. Um, yeah, so Acuna looks great. He looks healthy, you can tell. Um, and the broadcast team, Frenchie and those guys, have, have talked about it a couple of times. You can tell the difference when he's uh, hitting – Low fastballs, the way he doesn't, uh, the way his knees flex more when he goes down. Yeah. He's obviously quite a bit healthier this year than he was last year, so that's good. He, he never looked totally right no. last year. Uh, he's running good. Uh, he, so that, this is a thing that people shit on him a lot, uh, including us, is that he doesn't take it seriously a lot of the times, a little lack of days at goal, he's a kid, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Um, he started the rally in the first inning today, legging out an infield single. Yep. Uh, a field, <laughs> uh, that was fielded fairly cleanly just mm-hmm. kind of difficult to, i was listening on the radio so i didn't see it um but i mean with his legs started a rally yeah yeah i mean it's it, he the braves need leadership to win another world series i think mm-hmm. um the i think in 21 a lot of it came from riley and a lot of it came from the new guys in the clubhouse surprisingly right i think it was jock that, jock was one of them um rosario on the Latino side, yeah. I guess. And then all like Albies was hurt, so he was kind of out of the – No, Albies sorry, was uh, uh, Acuna was hurt, yeah. so he was kind of out of the mix. Albies really stepped up. I think that's what they were missing last year. I think all they more than anything that Albies does on the field, I think that's what they were missing from last year's run. They just didn't seem to have it together. Sometimes yeah. you just lose, too. Right. But um, – Normally <clears throat> you don't want to lose to a Phillies team that bad, though. I don't ever want to lose to any Phillies team because that entire fucking state is retarded. <laughs> it's the worst state in the – well, not the worst state in the country, but it's the dumbest state in the country. And the Phillies are going 1-161 one and 161 anyway so because um, they finally won a game. But, yeah, uh, Riley looks pretty good. He looks uh, pretty locked in. Travis Darno is the hottest hitter in baseball right now. He's hitting like 500, I, like legit I, 500. We've talked about it a lot of times uh, in our preview. I'm sure, certain we've said it last year a bunch, but Darno is – 
a dude you want up mm. in a pinch. Like yep. that guy is a, is is just a professional fucking hitter. Like he knows what he's doing. And we like we said, we used to have you know three of those guys in the lineup with them. Freeman and Dansby and Darno. Now it's maybe just down to Darno. I mean, actually, not really, because Riley is that guy too. Yeah. Um, and I feel like Riley officially became that guy in the 2021 LCS with the pair of walk offs or whatever. Um, but yeah, Acuna looks great. Riley looks. I mean, f- you know, Darno's hitting great, but Riley looks like a fucking MVP so mm. far. Two fantastic defensive plays yesterday. Yeah. Horrible one today. Although that's more on Rosario, or not more on him. Like it, no, that is on Rosario. The third baseman doesn't make that play. The shortstop or the left fielder make that play. Yeah, they sh- someone should have called him off. Yeah, but whatever. I mean, yeah, he's looked great defensively, which is always the case. Um, he's kind of blockaded from a gold glove by Arenado, who's I think he's better. Arenado's the best defensive third baseman in baseball, and it's not even close. I think. Oh yeah, because um, he's got. I don't. I wouldn't say he's got shortstop range, but he's got more range than anybody that's playing third base right now. Plus all the other things that every other third baseman has, and maybe a little bit better. And that's what Riley gets dinged on. Riley, but to me, is just um, uh, Chipper Jones with more power, essentially, and, yeah. and not a switch hitter. But what I mean by that is, Chip. People always said, oh, like especially the metrics, and we talked about it with Prayer. We don't like defensive metrics necessarily. Uh, people always said about Chipper, oh, he's not that good of a defender, not that good of a defender, but I would watch him make fantastic plays. Every play. Ever make every play. It was rare he fucked something up. Yeah. The bare hand charging in always made it. So I think the only knock on Riley and that our Arenado really kills him on. Um, I'm sure Arenado has better hands, but I don't have, seem to have I don't have any fucking problem with their, uh, yeah. Austin Riley's hands. And uh, yeah, he anything hit to him, he makes. Like, uh, yeah, but Arenado makes all those plays plus all the great ones too. Right. You know what I mean? That and that's probably just the range factor, to be honest, because he gets into position to field those balls where most third basemen. And that was what, like Brooks Robinson had great hands, obviously, and probably the most accurate no look throw I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. I don't know how the fuck he ever made any of these plays, but uh, just n- great natural instincts like that. But he, the thing that I think really set him apart and m- had like. The reason he made all those great plays is because he was in a position to make them by having great range like that. Yeah. And Mike Schmidt was the same way, by the way. He doesn't get enough credit for his his de- – now, Mike Schmidt would boot normal plays a lot, but as far as great plays went, he made a lot of those I, uh, as well. Mike Schmidt might be the most overlooked great player of all time. He's definitely underrated. He's in the 500 like, home run club, and he's probably one of the top 10 defensive third basemen ever. I think he's – like if you – he would be – if you had to make the alt an all – time Hall of Fame team, Mike Schmidt would be the starting third baseman. I mean, he... I don't know, Eddie Matthews, maybe. It depends on if you're trying to go lefty or righty. Yeah. Eddie Matthews was not as good defensively as Mike Schmidt. You're though. telling me if Mike Schmidt walks through that door... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a toy for Mike Schmidt? You don't have one in the back? Yeah. Um, yeah, I love... I mean, Schmidt struck out a lot in a time where people didn't strike out a lot. And I think... The M- yeah, and people probably shit on it. Yeah. If Mike Schmidt played today, people would be nutting over Mike Schmidt. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, with launch angle and all that stupid shit these days, he'd probably hit 50 home runs a year. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, the on to the next one. The pitching has looked really good. We kind of touched on it a little bit. Uh, Bryce Elder is throwing a great game today. Uh, he's getting into the third time through the lineup here. Bit of a jam right now. Yeah. Dan, um, what inning is this? The sixth? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. a sixth inning. Two outs. Um Two runners on. Yep, and uh, and uh, Arenado up. So this is the same thing that Dodd ran into last night. Pretty much the same exact scenario here, and this is the thing for young pitchers like going through the first. If you have great stuff like these guys do, getting through the first two times of a lineup, not easy, obviously, but you can do that. It's the third time through the lineup that sets you apart from good to great. Yep. Right? Yeah, um, so getting we'll that see. sixth inning. We'll see. I think that's something – you're not going to find this out a lot in the very first part of the season because dudes are still kind of stretching their arms out and getting their pitches locked in, getting their release points for their breaking pitches and stuff. But <clears throat> so far, so good, right? I mean, it's funny. We talked about um, the rotational depth all off season and in the preview show and stuff like that, and we knew it would be tested a little bit immediately because of Wright and um, – you know, whatever the hell the back end of our rotation was going to be. But now, and we were kind of like wondering, like, oh, who could it be? It could be Anderson, it could be Elder. Uh, I didn't even know Dodd's name, to be quite honest. Dylan. What? His name's Dylan. Dylan Dodd? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't even I didn't even know who he was. I Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't know. He, he Apparently, he was a third-round draft pick two years ago. Okay. 
uh, we've been drafting well, so that's yeah. good good yeah. sign. Um, but I mean, the the depth has been put to the test big time so far, especially since our our second series is against you know the Cardinals, who mm-hmm. um, yeah yeah the top two MVP vote getters last year. Uh, even their secondary bats are, are fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, guys who can hurt you, like uh, he's not playing today, but Tyler O'Neill, uh, William Contreras is mm-hmm. in the lineup now, who is a massive upgrade over, you know, Yadier Molina's corpse. Uh, but not in leadership. I'm told from a lot of Cubs fans that they really are glad he's gone because he was a total clubhouse liability. Really? I, I don't, I've never heard that before, but I, I was, I, the last couple of days – since we've been playing the Cardinals, I've just been looking, uh, I've been seeing, because you know the algorithm on Twitter, especially you search for Cardinal stuff and people start popping up. Right. I've seen a lot of people from the Cubs being like, thank God that dude's not here anymore. Ooh. And speaking of that, is that is fair? That foul? Yeah, uh, yeah. foul. Um, <clears throat> speaking of that, Jason Hayward is raking <clears throat> yeah. in L.A. right now. I saw that. Of course he is. By the way, if you had told me, at, like, if you had told me with no other context, that in 2023, Hayward and Freeman would be on the Dodgers, I might have just killed myself. No. I, like, I might have just been like, uh, uh, like I, can't, I can't take this anymore. The Braves are never going to win. That, that is hell. I fucking hate the Dodgers. Although I don't, didn't really hate the Dodgers in 2010. They were still kind of like whatever on them. Mm. Now, by, by mid of, middle of this century or decade, I fucking hate them. Um, but of course he is, and I'm sure he's still playing like elite, semi-elite defense. Well, he's pinch hitting and late defensive replacement mostly. Okay. So he's in the first four game. I think he's got nine at bats total. Okay. Something like that. So they're using him pretty sparingly, and I would imagine only against right-handed pitching. Elder just strikes out Arenado to end the inning. Wow. That's the second time he struck him out. Arenado well. has not looked good this series. No, I mean, again, it's fucking April, but but that was a. I can't believe he got him on that pitch. Like, was Nolan tired of hitting? Um, I don't know. I think he uh, got – so the the previous at bat, he got fooled by a backup uh, curveball that just hung – I mean, god damn, if he had hit that pitch, that would have – who knows, that may yeah. not have landed yet. So I, maybe he just didn't track it well. But, yeah, it's um, – the uh, it's early. I'm not too concerned about Arenado. He's going to get his. Speaking of, by the way, crushing <clears throat> a ball back to Riley for a second, that fucking home run he hit in game one was – that was a – I have not – I don't know that I've seen a ball hit that – Far in St. Louis since Albert Pujols was like prime Albert Pujols. Yeah. I mean that was f- fucking insane. Yeah, the uh, four seventy three I think is what it got measured at, <clears throat> and uh, he was getting made fun of a little bit yesterday because the guys asked him if that's the longest ball he's ever hit, and he said, "No, I think I hit one over the center field uh, scoreboard in AAA." And I was like, "Dude, that doesn't count. That was in the minor <laughs> league. Shut the fuck up." Um, but that's he he absolutely destroyed that ball. Yeah. Um, uh, next up is the rules, new rules affecting the Braves one way or another. I don't, I not yet. Yeah. Um, Ronald is stealing the amount of bases I would expect for a healthy Ronald to steal, and he uh, hasn't even been running that much. No. I, I've thought. No, and uh, you know I don't know that it necessarily. We'll we'll see, right? Well, it it's got to make sense. I'm sure he's got a green light, you but it's think, yeah. it's got to make sense for him to steal bases. Like is when when. Matt Olson and Austin Riley are behind you. If you're on base, you're in scoring position, right? right? So how much does it help? Like with two outs? And I believe game one, he should have been on base for that Riley bomb. Yeah. yeah. And he got thrown out stealing. And that, look, that happens sometimes. But in um, with two outs, yeah, try to get into scoring position for 100%. When you lead off the inning and you get on first, go ahead and go for it. But if there's one out, usually just kind of see what happens first. Yeah. Um, although – the other side of that coin is that Riley and Olsen are both prone to hit in double plays because they're both slow as shit. So, right. you know, do what you got to do. I don't know. I think it's – I don't think it's really affected anybody so far. The Braves don't have – now that Kenley Jansen's gone, they don't have some dude with a weird delivery right. that fidgets a lot and, and talks to himself between every pitch. These guys seem to enjoy – and I honestly, I think it's helping them. Like, you don't have time to mm-hmm. sit there and think. There's a, there's a phrase in uh, – uh, that we use when we're teaching people how to shoot. Think long, think wrong, right? You yeah. overanalyze shit. Sometimes you get paralysis by analysis or whatever, or sometimes you lose focus. You, what you do is uh, subvert your natural instinct when you're doing that, right? Right. Like when you teach somebody how to shoot, I say, shoot me. They're like, what do you mean? I'm just like, pretend you're shooting me. Most people do like this, right? Yeah. Point their finger at you. I'm like, all right, that's how you shoot a handgun. 
Just point your fucking index finger down the body of that weapon and track it right into the target. It's, it's that simple. So I think speeding up may be helping everybody, not just the Braves. Pitcher, pitcher wise, I mean. Yeah, yeah. It does complicate holding base runners and stuff like that. And for some people that have funky deliveries, it might be fucking with them. But I think it's actually helping everybody. I think, do you think there's any effect? I mean, the Braves are still a relatively young team. Um, getting a little older, uh, but yeah, you know, because the years go by, but still a relatively young team. Do you think that it's helpful in any sort of uh, generational situation? Well, I think they, a lot of these kids experienced this in the minor leagues already. They right? did, yeah. So, they were yeah. talking about that actually with uh, yesterday during the broadcast about how Dodd mm-hmm. had already been pitching with the pitch clock. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's actually half the Braves rotation grew up in this environment. Spencer Strider only spent one year in the minor leagues, right? So yeah, he uh, he definitely has done most of his professional pitching uh, with the pitch clock now that you include this year. So I don't think it's going to be an issue for most people, to be honest. Yeah, you don't think? I mean, I guess the only other way it could affect it is if I, I, once the season really gets going, uh, Acuna and Harris in particular just start running wild. Or an, an Albies, too, for that matter, uh-huh. I guess. Uh, Riley hits one down the line. Fair ball. All right. Oh, he's not that slow. He's just big. Olsen he, is... He's really slow. He looks like he's running in fucking quicksand. It look, like, it's like he's, he's like a marionette body. <laughs> but like a really strong one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so next up, Orlando Arcia. Is he the guy? Maybe. Um... And if he is, we got a pretty good deal on him. Um, I still, you can see from that play today, his defensive instincts are not very good. Uh, he's got the best infield arm in all of baseball, I believe. I think he's got the highest velocity of anybody in baseball throwing okay. on the infield. But he's been making some plays so far. Pretty this year. like historically has been pretty wild uh, as a thrower. Yeah, maybe he's uh, cleaned that up a little bit. He's definitely going to hit. Nobody, I don't think anybody questions that. Um, <clears throat> but it does seem like he's kind of coming into his own. He's in his prime right now physically. He's 28 years old. So you, you, if we get two, three, four years out of him at 15 to 20 home runs a year and he plays 988 plus defense, then you can't complain. I mean, you're not going to get any better than that, not right? Not for the money. Um, what, so they signed three years, what? $7.3 million. Total. Yeah, and then a fourth mutual option. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Fourth club option, so they keep it for a fourth year as well. And yeah. it's only a, if they want to get rid of him, it's only a million dollar buyout. Um, so that's that's about as good as you can expect from a contract. The questions are Von Grissom and uh, uh, Braden Shoemake. Are they ever going to be good enough to play for a, for a championship caliber team, mm-hmm. right? In a reasonable amount of time. Um, now, there's no rush. You can leave them down there as long as you want. Braden Shoemake's 25 years old, And though. Grissom was double-A last year. So yeah. Didn't he not even start in double-A? Was Didn't he start in single-A last year? He started in A-ball, yeah. Yeah, so like... High-A, but but still, yeah. There's no... It's a bit like... Not unreasonable. Yeah, no. It's a bit unreasonable to be like, oh, fuck, dude. Grissom's not in the big leagues this year. Mm-hmm. Is he done? Like, it, realistically, like, if Ozzy doesn't get hurt, we, he never even comes up. Yeah. Yeah, you, we never would have seen him yeah. if, uh, if Ozzy hadn't been hurt. Yeah, it's true. So, you know... But my my thinking is, he's wh- the reason that uh, you sent me that fan graphs thing this morning, and I've read about that as well. I think uh, O'Brien posted something about it not too long ago. But um, the reason it appears he got sent down wasn't because of his defense; it was because of his low exit velocity. He he would be in the bottom third of the league in exit velocity. And even in, and last year was the same way. Yeah. He uh I think off the bat like average was like 84 miles an yeah. hour uh which is not good. And Arcia I think clocks in at like 92, 93 yeah. something like that. Um, I think league average is 85 give or take. Okay. So yeah, he's uh he's quite Arcia is quite a bit above average when it comes to that. <clears throat> and you know it's it's you're you're in a win now team right they don't have the the good fortune to be able to slot so like if michael harris had come up last year and sucked they would have sent him down yeah that's just the way it is he just happened to be very good so and well and harris too um he plays elite defense right both as a catcher and a thrower right he he's got a fucking hose and he plays a premium position like you you could they expect more out of him but like if we could right now live with harris hitting 
250 and, and 15 to 20 home runs with yeah. the way he plays defense. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's not – and they expect a lot more than that. But, like, it's – we mm. don't need a lot out of him at the plate considering – how much fucking ground he covers and all mm-hmm. that, all that fun shit. Yeah. So I wonder if um, this will this will be interesting because, you know, Von Grissom, let's say he's ready next year. Then you got him under team control for five years, right? That's mm-hmm. a long time, uh, and that would that would give you him under team control with Arcia under team control for two additional seasons after this at a minimum. But Shoemake looked really good in spring training i wonder if he is an attractive prospect for somebody if arcia is still doing this um if he's still tracking like this by july does anthopolis you know take a look at packaging him and or shoemake or or both or uh, along with rosario or azuna or something like that to get a legit left fielder like an all-star caliber left fielder because if i'm a team if I'm a team in a rebuild right now and I've got an all-star caliber left fielder and I can get Vaughn Grissom for him right now plus another player that, that'll fucking drive in some runs and stuff like that, I'd probably do that deal because I think Vaughn Grissom is going to be really fucking good yeah. in, in, ba- in Major League Baseball. So I would take that deal. And as a Braves fan, it would suck because we kind of got to know him a little bit and he would – Seems like a fun dude. Then, then we would fucking get to see him crush somewhere else at some point and it would probably come back to bite us 10 <laughs> years from now or how five to 10 years from now. But yeah. You know, I, to 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 shore up our last fielding position with a guy that can fucking you know drive in runs and hopefully under some measure of control. Yeah, like not just a, a one year rental. Because yeah. I mean, yeah, like we're in a, a, a position now where the window is wide fucking open. Yeah, I mean, we we would want somebody for three or four years at least. I would expect. expect. Right. Um, I, but I mean, this is this is the window, right? This is the mm. and we've already won a World Series, so now we're in the sort of the dynasty window. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're, this is our – we've won five straight division titles. We have a World Series. To put that into perspective, that that, that would put us about 1997, mm-hmm. if this was the 90s Braves. How'd that work out? <laughs> Dynasty, right? <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out great. Could have been better. Still a dynasty. Could have been better. Could have been a lot but better. But, yeah, I'm thinking somebody like uh, Brian Reynolds from Pittsburgh would be a nice pickup. Yeah. I mean, he's hitting 500 with four home runs this season so far already. Pretty chill. Um, so, But it's the Pirates, right? So they, they will never be able to pay him. They wouldn't – even if they had the ability to pay him, they still wouldn't do it. <laughs> no. So I want to say – what they, I read the other day that their owner is the only sports owner in major, in North America that isn't a billionaire. <laughs> what does he, like, own – a Seven Eleven somewhere. Uh, yeah, basically, he's like nine hundred something million. But that's just, just embarrassing. It's just sad. Yeah, that's that's dumb. Um, so I, I think that he's going to be available. To be honest, and if you're just swapping out, um, if you're just swapping out Ozuna, and then who's still got a couple of years of probably twenty plus home runs left? Yeah. Um, along with a guy who tracks as being a fucking all-star caliber shortstop at some point or even a third but he might be better at third base we'll see uh i take that deal is he what's brian reynolds um contract situation is he just arbitration uh, i would think still? so he's 28 he came up in 2019 so one two three four this would be his fifth year uh he signed a two-year 13 and a half million dollar deal okay so he's hunting for his career contract yeah and frankly the braves have it They've got plenty of, if you want to call it cap space, they've got plenty of that. Right. Because they've got a lot of dudes locked into super team-friendly contracts. I mean, if you, you've you got a shortstop who's um, – <clears throat> if uh, I think if Arcia continues the way he's playing this year, he's like a four-and-a-half wins above replacement guy, mm-hmm. um, you would pay $20 million a year on the open market for that right now yeah well the other thing too that's funny about that is when they were signed so there's like a meme kind of with base uh, in like baseball reddit and stuff like that where it's like the braves can't keep getting away with this and uh man they're signing these guys to like uh you know below market deals and then other people are coming back and saying well no this is actually like pretty pretty market value pretty like pretty standard market value like you know especially with harris and riley Mm -hmm. given their age and they're buying out some arbitration where they could have paid way less Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But the thing, even with that, is is that yeah, it's it's pretty fair market today. 
And Austin Riley's 26, but when he's 28, 29, 30, mm-hmm. it's a fucking steal. Yeah. What would he be worth in those? <laughs> so, like, the sooner you sign someone to a contract, the more valuable that contra- contract becomes. Yeah, it's 100%, 100% right. And there's uh, – I guess we'll see how, how A decides to handle it, but I do think there's got to be some impetus to, to shore up that left field spot. I mean, we'll see it, it, if – they're going to give uh, Rosario in particular. They're going to give him a chance. Yeah, I would think so. And he's um, been good so far this year. He's, you know, I mean, hitting like 400 or well before today. I, I don't know. What he, I think he has one base hit today. Maybe he um, looks uh, he looks a bit lost against left-handers, which he really shouldn't be pit- hitting against very much, right. I, I suppose. Um, and we do have uh, Hilliard. I believe was a backup mm-hmm. outfielder who's kind of I think supposed to be there four days against lefties, and then. I think our DH swaps out between Ozuna and and um, one of the catchers. Essentially, both catchers played last night. Yeah, um, yeah. That's. It seems like we're a little log jammed at DH. I don't see. I don't know what. I don't. I don't think I would keep Ozuna on this roster. To be honest, I, we're just like stuck with him. Yeah. At this point, which is kind of the one sort of blemish on AA's Alex Anthopoulos's. Um, track record so far yeah. is, is the Ozuna signing which man he got excited for his COVID year yeah where he just was smashed and granted Ozuna had a pretty good two years before that with the Cardinals um looked good and, yeah and then but yeah just off a fucking cliff uh but hitting your wife can kind of mess with your head well she shouldn't have been standing there uh what's uh who's pitching here who's this guy Tomkin Tonkin oh RC a nice little play the gulf of yeah, there we go. I mean, RC's defense to me has been fantastic so far. It's been very good so far. Yeah, um, uh, so you, yeah I'm, and I, I'm all about giving him a shot too because again, you can let Grissom marinate. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't even know Grissom's name. <clears throat> like it really was out of necessity that he came up. Um, Harris the same way, although Harris was quite a bit more polished. And again, Harris has a. W- there's no skill that Von Grissom has that is even remotely close to to Harris's defense. Um, yet, you know, you hope that for Grissom. Um, next up, I had a question. Uh, how have you liked the Braves new, uh, play-by-play guy so far? Brandon, uh, Godden. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's good. Yeah. He's not, he's, uh, funny. Um, goes back and forth talking shit with, uh, Frenchie a lot. I like that. Uh, not Chip Carey. <laughs> he's not Chip. Chip is just a cornball. And I came to like... It, enjoy Chip's corniness, but yeah. uh, Godden seems more, um, I don't know, modern sensibilities, I guess you could say. He had a thing. I missed it, but I read someone tweet about it. Uh, he was describing the bigger bases, and he was like the – he just made a dick joke about it, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah, he said uh, it's um, 2.8 inches bigger, which uh, makes every man in North America jealous or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember exactly what he said, but it was funny, yeah. Yeah, to make, just, you know, and if you're – look, if you're going to drop a casual dick joke in the – in the broadcast, mm-hmm. I'm fucking there for it all yeah, day. I'm always I'm always in for dick jokes. Just ta- yeah. I'll talk about dicks. And then today he had what he said the chicken shit thing or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When Riley dropped that fly ball, he's like turning chicken shit into chicken yeah. salad. I, he didn't say shit. But. Hopefully he doesn't go full of Tom Brenneman. <laughs> <laughs> Start talking and shit about gay people. But uh, that's uh, really the the line you cross. The yeah. line you walk. By the way, <clears throat> so RC has range factor so far this year. He hasn't made any errors yet. I don't think he's made any today. But his range factor so far this year is five, uh, five nine three, and Javier Baez led Major League Baseball last year with a four three four. Now it's we're five games into the season, right? But I'm not sure that range factor is something that goes up and down. So we'll we'll keep an eye on him. Look, I don't know why you would suddenly like lose range necessarily. I'm, yeah, who knows? I mean, I think range. I think range factor uh, is a combination of getting to the ball outside of a certain uh, distance, and then also making the play. So you yeah, have yeah. both to get the range factor part. Um, but he's looked really good so far. I'm, I'm very comfortable with him in Ooh. that position. That's gone. That is smoked. Was anybody on base? No. That's that young kid from, Walker. Uh, from he's Atlanta. A, he's an animal. He's huge. He's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, yeah, like 250. Yeah. Giant man. Yeah. Well, he's a child. He's like 22 years old. Yeah, he is real young. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's he, got some holes at the bottom of his swing. Doesn't track breaking pitches in the bottom of the zone all that well yet, but he hits. I mean, he just uh, they hung one right there, and he fucking hit a line drive. Look at this, 
Boom. That's the pitch he's not been hitting well so far, and he just hit a fucking line drive home run off of it. So Yeah. And uh, I, again, I don't know which pitcher this is, so I think Snicker was kind of uh, getting some guys, and getting someone an inning mm-hmm. early in the season. Uh, hopefully, and look, I want to close out this fucking series with a sweep. Michael Tonkin, he's 33 years old. Okay. So he's just there to He was in Min- Minnesota. He's been a pretty solid reliever for Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, okay. Gotta Actually, the last two years he's kind of sucked. And again, though, like this is a veteran, I assume, who is on the back end to mm-hmm. shore things up. It's a long season. And, and that's what I like about the bullpen is there's not really any like glaring, god-awful hole – or even someone like Luke Jackson, who somehow puts up good numbers, even though he oh. like very clearly, <laughs> visibly sucks at his job. Uh, yeah, where is he now? Uh, I don't know. Colorado where? or Arizona? Or Actually, he might be the San Francisco. Oh, yeah, he did go to San Francisco. Because he teamed back up with, uh, yep. with Jock. Yeah, yeah, back in San Francisco. But I think he's hurt still. I think because he tore his ACL or, or I mean, uh, had Tommy John surgery. Um, yeah, I've liked Gotten too, though. I've liked the new. I was wondering how it was going to be. Um, cause I've listened to, Ch- I mean, Chip's been there for like 15 years or something. 18. 18. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's been forever. Yeah. Um, so he's been good so far. Haven't, it hasn't been like weird. I haven't noticed anything. Where he I'm just like, has the, the classic announcer voice. And I like that we had something different for all those years and now it's just the same guy. Yeah. He just sounds the same as every other announcer, but I, I, the, he's, he's sharp and the conversation's good and he talks a lot of shit, which I like. Yeah. I've, um, I've been enjoying it. And again, yeah. like, I, you know, it's funny, like watching baseball, is um, a baseball game is almost like a podcast in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. Yeah, just random meandering conversation for three hours. Well, two and a half hours now. But. Yeah, like it really, it's not like football. It's not like even like golf, which lasts all day. Like it really is, you know, you're sitting there and, and the announcers play just this huge part of it because it's background noise for half the time. Yeah. Like you're not, I mean, me and you are probably more locked in than the average person, but even I'm not locked in, like crazy locked in the whole game or anything. I'm just kind of enjoying the convo, scrolling through my phone, dealing with one of my fucking kids, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 important to me that I don't hate the announcers because when you watch other games on MLB TV... There's some bad ones, yeah. There's some crews that are just unfucking listenable I mean, I, we grew up pretty lucky... You know, Pete Van Weeren was good. Uh, Skip was good. Um, uh, Don Sutton. I Don like. Sutton was a Hall of Famer, you know what I mean, who also was good on the broadcast. And on the other side, on WGN, you had Hawk, you had Steve Stone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of the best. Harry, and Harry. Harry, yeah. Some of the best broadcasters of all time were on all the major television stations. And now there's 30 teams and each one of them has a guy and there might not be 30 people that can do this well it's you know I mean? uh it's not quite as bad as the nfl quarterback situation but yeah. there's definitely fewer there's more teams than there are guys we don't I, we can't even get good announcers in football you yeah know what I mean? like they they had uh god what the fuck is his name i can never remember that dude's name lewis riddick like super smart guy he's yeah. that bald black dude that okay. was on monday night football for a while super smart knows everything about football his analysis is great doesn't have dumbass hot takes but he's boring as shit yep it's just hard to find somebody that's really good at both and then it's, then for some reason they have like booger mcfarlane riding a motorcycle around oh the sideline or some shit he looks like he's de-evolving <laughs> He looks like one of the fucking uh, the turtle people from the fucking Super Mario Brothers movie. Did back he in the get day. shot with? Yeah, yeah. and he just devolves Jesus into Christ, a thing. Man. Or like fucking um, in the first X Men movie where they try to evolve the senator into oh, and it a turns mutant. into water. Yeah, yeah, it just turns into a blob. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the same way with Booger McFarlane. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that, glad the announcement crew is good, and obviously Frenchie's great, and I can't wait mm-hmm. for uh, Glavin to be back in the booth this year. I guess his like parent, one of his dad was like dying or super mm. sick or something like that. Well, that's kind of what uh, we talked to Ryan Spader about it last week. But that's kind of what uh, uh, what's his nuts has going on now. Um, our Paul our, Bird, Paul Bird, yeah, his, his wife, his is wife's it? all fucked up. Or, yeah, I think she's on the men now, so she's probably over it now. Not over it, but she's getting back now. But he wanted to spend this yeah. year with her, whatever, dude. Do Take, what you want. Yeah, do you got to do? There, there's a job waiting for him. Um, looking forward. So I thought this was interesting. Um, because I was, I remember telling you before the series started, I was like, man, this is such a bad draw at the beginning of the year. The fucking Cardinals, like, we, we start slow. Our pitching's hurt. They have a good lineup. This fucking sucks. I, I was expecting, hoping we'd steal a game out of this series instead of being on the verge of a sweep. 
Um, but last year, what we talked about when the Braves, you know, basically just shit their pants for the first two months was, okay, June. June is the month where we got to let it rip. If we do not come out of June with a really good record for that month, mm-hmm. the, C- the, we're, we're, the division's probably fucked and playoffs are in question. They ripped off an insane record that June. I think it was like 20 and 9 or something, even better than that maybe. Just, I mean, incredible record. Obviously uh, cut deeply into the Mets lead, totally Mm. changed the season. That was when Michael Harris came up, blah, blah, blah. So I thought to myself, all right, I'm going to look at the schedule again this year Mm. and see where is that month. Because the other thing I I was looking at was I looked at April's schedule, and I was like, fuck, dude. There's a lot of uh, – it's a tough April yeah. to an extent. I mean, April, we catch – we open with the Nats, obviously. That's not a problem. But in April, we catch the Cardinals, Padres, Reds and Royals, fine, whatever. They suck. Padres again, Astros, Marlins, who are no pushover just because of their pitching, and then the Mets. Not an easy April, especially when you're banged up and, yeah. the, and the Braves are banged up, and they're not going to be fully healthy at the end of the month. They're not going to be at, at full strength. So we're going to be playing down a little bit. Now, granted, the Mets, I don't know when Verlander's coming back. So Yeah, I don't know either. So that's one <clears throat> thing. But I was looking at the schedule again to see, all right, when is our time to rip? When is our time where it's like this is the month where we just pass everybody? Mm-hmm. This is the month where we put it into gear. And it's kind of June again. I put June in quotes because it starts a little before June mm-hmm. and it ends a little before June ends. But from May 29th to June 25th, uh, Atlanta plays the A's, the D-backs, the Mets, then the Nats, Tigers, Rockies, Phillies, and Reds. Mostly shit. Like, mostly really fucking bad. So for me, why this is so huge and why I'm I'm really, really locked into these games right now is because I feel like this is theft. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're definitely uh, getting ahead of the eight ball here. Yeah, certainly. And then just the second half after the All Star break is, we'll we'll see about the White Sox. They're they're hurting. They they're missing. Uh, they lost probably their uh, second best hitter to the Astros. Mm-hmm. Um, their best pitcher, I think, has got cancer. So, you know, <laughs> fuck. One uh, of their other best pitchers had a sex scandal situation yeah. in the off season. It's <clears throat> been tumultuous. So we start. When we come out of the All Star break, we have Chicago and Arizona at home. That that's not that's not tough. Um, then at Milwaukee and at Boston. Boston kind of stinks. Boston so they- sucks, and it depends on if Milwaukee. If you if you don't catch their fucking top two starters, that's yeah. that's not hard either. Then Milwaukee again after that. Then uh, then the Angels. Then the Cubs. Then Pittsburgh. That's that's through the first first two weeks of August basically. Okay. So. You know, if especially if we win these enter uh, or these uh, divisional games, if we're if we play well against the East, it's going to be really hard for any of these teams to catch us. Yeah. Um, just because of these soft spots in the line in the in the schedule. Now, everything Phil, the Phillies are going to get what we got last year from our from what we've gotten the last two years actually one from the deals in twenty one that AA made. And two from Harris and Strider coming up last year, or Strider going to the the rotation and Harris coming up. They're going to get Bryce Harper, who's one of the best players in baseball, up probably in the early part of July, yeah. at least as a designated hitter. And not just his capability, but clubhouse leadership and intensity and excitement. They're going to get a huge fucking boost in that second half. So they may outbraves us this mm-hmm. year. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Typically it's us in June, July that fucking get hot and stay hot for the rest of the season. Good chance it's going to be Philly that does that this year. So I think it's a good thing that we're getting ahead a little bit. I, that's what I'm saying. Like we, st- every game we fucking win against a good team in April and, and May, I, it's it's theft. It's stealing. Like we usually float around 500, figure things out. We appear to be coming into the season pretty lo- a lot more locked in mm. than we usually do. And so getting to a point where we get to the soft part of our schedule and we can really get fucking moving and get running – with a record that's already, you know, 10 games over 500, something like that, that's incredible. Because I agree with you. I think the Phillies are going to be that team coming into July that is anywhere from five games under to five games Mm -hmm. over 500. 
with easily within range of the playoffs because, yeah. like we said, there's six playoff spots and there's only eight teams competing anyway. Mm-hmm. Maybe there'll be nine. There'll be some surprise mm-hmm. team. I think I think we didn't include the Marlins, but I could see them being a surprise team. If the Mets continue to have these problems, I think the Marlins probably take the third spot in the National League East. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean they'll make the playoffs because the Dodgers and Padres. San Francisco is not as good as they've been, but they still have pretty good pitching, so they good, can still make yeah, it. Good enough. Yeah, like They, they could do something. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think the Phillies are. If you could take like a uh, uh, halfway through the season over under on wins for mm. the Phillies, you could probably get pretty good odds. You might be getting good odds already if the, if they start out, uh, keep starting the way they're starting. But I yeah, I expect the Phillies to be extremely dangerous with the top with that top three in the rotation mm. and and the lineup. I mean, the bullpen's still a question mark, but yeah, I think they are going to be the second half team that they just turn it on and you know. Especially because of who it is that's coming back. Like it, Schwarber is a great hitter. <clears throat> uh, Castellanos is obviously a big part of their offense as well. Rio Muto is a big part of their offense and their defense. But Harper is the goddamn Terminator. Like he's one of the best clutch baseball players I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, even though in 21 down the stretch, uh, uh, Austin Riley severely outperformed him. And that's the reason that Philly lost and the Braves won and still somehow Harper won the MVP. It's very <laughs> bizarre to me that that happened. But generally speaking, and we saw it in the fucking playoffs this past year in the, yeah. in the World Series and the LCS this past year, Harper is the goddamn Terminator. That and dude, he, he lives for that shit. And he doesn't just, like, hit a home run. Like, he mm. rips your fucking soul yeah, out. Yeah, it's like there's gravity to the big plays he makes for some reason. I don't know yeah. what it is. It's like a Reggie Jackson or Kurt Gibson kind of situation where it always happens in these fucking peak moments. And it's because he's fucking locked in, man. The kid's been thinking about those moments every day his entire life. Well, he's been told he was going to be those moments mm-hmm. every day for his entire life, basically. <clears throat> I mean, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated younger than LeBron was, I think. Uh, he was 14, I think, yeah. It's something dumb like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's he's been told this for forever. I didn't even masturbate very good when I was 14. I mean, I did it, but... Yeah, I, w- I mean, I, I was pretty good, but yeah, it's... Uh, he, he's, he's kind of become one-dimensional. Like, he only hits. Which, now, fine. But... It's all 2023. He, that's all he needs to do. And it, honestly, like, oh, are they are they pinch hitting that O'Neill? Tyler O'Neill? Yeah, here? I think so. So his he's not grounded anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they said he was dogging at around third. Maybe they saw. I didn't see the footage that showed him dogging at around third base. His excuse was interesting, actually. Did you hear it? So Marmol was like the, that said that came out in the media and said the effort wasn't enough and stuff like that. Which, by the way, I think is shitty of a manager to do mm. like at, at all. I like the Cox. Snitker situation, which is kind of keep it behind mm-hmm. closed doors. Uh, however, well, Bobby ran out to center field to relieve Andrew Jones at the time. <laughs> True, uh, wasn't a, that, yeah. That but, might be why Andrew's still not in the Hall of Fame. It might be, yeah. Uh, but uh, um, essentially, what O'Neill said was, so I guess O'Neill is pretty fast. Like he can run. He plays center field, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he's kind of like a dumb runner. Mm-hmm. Like he's just like run, one hundred ten percent, blah 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 blah. And uh, just goes hard, kind of like like a like a blindfolded bull. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Just fucking runs his face off, not really paying attention. And he said, uh, for health purposes, he has been learning techniques to sort of run smarter mm-hmm. while maintaining speed. And he said that he was kind of too in his head of staying on technique, and that caused him to round the base shitty. Which I did see that he rounded the base weird. Yeah. And so he said he was kind of like, which is not good. He was thinking about how to run. Yeah, that's never good. Like thinking about step over that's, step. That's how the yips happen. Right. When you when you think about the mechanical thing you're doing, that's how you get the yips. Yeah. So I thought that I thought that was an interesting. I didn't realize guys kind of even did that, which is learn how to run in a less, I guess, violent way. Uh, yeah, I guess all assholes and elbows. I mean, that's. Uh... <sighs> Base running. There's a lot of injuries that happen. And base running, mm-hmm. probably more than any other part of the game, I would imagine. Well, the the other main thing, I guess, would be running in the outfield, right? Well, running right. in the outfield is different, though, because and that that it makes more sense that he would do it for out the outfield rather than for base running because you're tracking a ball, right? So you don't want your eye level to be moving up and down a lot. That's something a lot of people have trouble with. Yeah, is catching balls on the run like that. Um, so yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah, because even uh, maybe even in the outfield, he was just kind of. I mean, he's built like a fucking running back. He is. He is a, he's he's his arms are too large. <laughs> it's, it's starting to become a problem. <laughs> um, he looks like uh, Schwarzenegger in Twins when he puts that fucking Hawaiian shirt on and just rips that the biceps rip out of it. Yeah, that's what he looks like to me. Absolutely, Ty- I think they call him, I think the Cardinals fans call him Tyler Swole Neal. Yeah, which is yeah. pretty fucking apt. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a I thought that was an interesting comment on on from Marmol. Although to be quite honest, like we said earlier, uh, their third base coach, awful send there, even worse send today. Yeah, the one today was bad. I mean that both of those were rally killing sets. Yeah, and just not a very heads up play yeah. either. Now it's different when Cocaine Ron does it because I don't. I'm fine with anything Ron Washington. Yeah, he's just all hyped up on coke, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's the cocaine. Yeah. That's like Jim Leahy. That's the liquor talking. You know what I mean? And, and I'm not going to get mad at a man for doing cocaine on the job. Or being like, I, I wouldn't get mad at him be, for being super aggressive, but, you know, and look, these things get, they happen in bunches too, I'm sure. Yeah. Where you make bad decisions like that. Uh, it certainly happens for umpires and players where you're just off a little bit, your timing's off. But yeah, you got you to gotta do better than that, honestly. And it doesn't help Marmol's case too much that it happened again in the same kind of way the day after. That's your staff, bro. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's a, that is kind of a thing with O'Neill too. Like you got to put these people in a position to succeed. Mm-hmm. And I would say, uh, in terms of action on the field in the game, the only person who has the only person who has more of an impact maybe than the third base coach is the manager. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know that the manager has as much impact as the third base coach on pitching and setting the lineup. I guess, but and setting hit and runs, yeah. maybe. But uh, or and giving green lights. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, otherwise, seems to me like the third base coach has got to be. I mean, you can make some outs as a coach. That's the only. There's only two coaches in baseball, like in you know in football, for example. Mm-hmm. Any coach on the staff can fuck something up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like a line coach can give someone a bad mm-hmm. instruction mid game or whatever, whatever. Uh, obviously the coordinators and the head coach can do that, but in baseball, it's really just two dudes. Wasn't Tommy Lasorda his own third base coach for a long time? I think he was. Yeah, for years, I believe. Um, I'm surprised more dudes don't do that. I'm taking over third base play calling duties. Yeah, I think Tommy did it just because he loved baseball. Yeah. And nobody could stop him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he also wanted to fuck up the Philly fanatic. He wanted to get on the he field. He did, yeah. I mean, but the Philly fanatic would, would, uh, belly bump him a lot as well yeah. so i think he's i don't know who started that feud but it went on for about 20 years i the only i, I think love, i actually think it's pronounced frenetic though isn't it is yeah. that right delco no. the philly frenetic he says no i think they the philly fanatic should have gone to lasorda's grave and taken a picture of him like pissing on it or spitting on it or something or banging his wife yeah or, or that yeah uh his dead wife but still <laughs> hey man look she's right next to him <laughs> dig her up <laughs> probably might be on top of or below him uh, that's how they bury people sometimes, like married couples. One on top of the other? Yeah. Like in a 69, or how does it work? That's how, yeah, it's, they're both, both in individual coffins, but I do hope that they 69 them, and eventually the wood will give way, and yeah. the skeletons can, yeah. can 69. Uh, that's all I've got for today. We're going to watch the end of this Braves-Cardinals game. Hope they fucking finish sweeping them up, bringing out the brooms. Uh, as always, we're here every we, – we haven't nailed down a day yet. I think – Probably Wednesday or Friday would be the day to do this, though, yeah. in terms of our production schedule. Um, but that'll be nailed down soon. We had a pre recorded show on Drinking Bros, mm. so we had a, a wide open Wednesday. Um, but yeah, for Dan Holloway, I'm Rob Fox. Thank you for listening to Tomahawk. Catch you bastards next week. <laughs>